Good day, here are the headlines from the Philippine News Agency. Our top story at this hour, the United States-Philippines Civil Nuclear Cooperation Agreement, known as the 123 Agreement, officially entered into force on July 2, according to the U.S. Department of State. Signed in November last year, this agreement establishes a legal framework that allows the export of nuclear fuel reactors, equipment, and special nuclear material from the U.S. to the Philippines. It aims to facilitate cooperation between the two nations in the safe and secure use of nuclear energy adhering to International Atomic Energy Agency standards, national laws, and international agreements. With the agreement now now in effect, it enables the transfer of information, nuclear materials, equipment, and components directly between the Philippines and the U.S. or through authorized entities. This will support potential nuclear power projects with U.S. providers and streamline licensing requirements for private sector investments in nuclear-related technology transfers. The U.S. State Department also says nuclear energy could help achieve global climate change and energy security targets. It also highlighted the importance of developing a safe, secure, and modern civil nuclear sector in the country. President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. earlier expressed interest in pursuing the country's energy mix by 2032. Through partnerships with American providers, the Marcus administration aims to increase the country's renewable energy mix to 35% by 2030 and 50% by 2040. Meanwhile, U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, Mary Kay Carlson, says the signing of the Civil Nuclear Cooperation Agreement reaffirms U.S. commitment to support the country's energy and climate goals. The Philippines has rejected China's accusations that the BRP Sierra Madre grounded on a Yungan shoal in the West Philippine Sea has damaged the coral reef ecosystem. It says China's claim is false and a classic misdirection. According to National Task Force, a West Philippine Sea spokesperson Jonathan Malaya, it is China that has caused significant damage to corals. He says China's construction of artificial islands and harmful fishing practices have degraded the maritime environment and jeopardized the natural habitat and livelihood of thousands of Filipino fisherfolk. A report by China's state-run Daily Global Times accused the BRP Sierra Madre of causing damage to the coral reefs and the environmental pollution in the South China Sea. Malaya referred to the 2016 ruling by the Permanent Court of Arbitration, which found China's island building activities had damaged the Panganiban Reef and that Chinese fishermen were harvesting endangered species, further harming the coral reef environment. He also cited a 2023 report from the Center for Strategic International Studies, which stated that 75% of the damage in the South China Sea was caused by China, including extensive damage from giant clam harvesting and dredging activities. Malaya also pointed out that China's illegal fishing activities have severely degraded marine environments in several areas of the West Philippine Sea. Malaya warned the public and the international community of China's efforts to spread fake news and disinformation against the Philippines and called for an independent marine scientific assessment in the West Philippine Sea. Meanwhile, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or CBCP, is set to release an Oratio Imperata, a mandatory prayer to pray for the easing of tensions in the West Philippine Sea. The prayer is set to be released on July 25, the Feast of St. James, and will be prayed until the Solemnity of the Mother of God on January 1, 2025, the World Day of Peace. The National Economic and Development Authority vows to boost investments and push for reforms that will open more quality jobs for Filipinos. Now, the statement came after the Philippine Statistics Authority reported on Monday that the 
employment rate dropped to 4.1% this May from 4.3% a year earlier. NEDA Secretary Arsenio Balisacan also cited recent data showing the number of Filipinos with full-time jobs increased by 2.8 million, while those with part-time jobs dropped by 1.7 million. Balisaka noted the role of digital technologies in improving skills and competencies of workers in the public sector. He says with the proliferation of the use of artificial intelligence in the digital sector, they are outlining the government's trabajo para sa bayan plan in a way that will help Filipinos adapt to new technologies. Meanwhile, Balisakan underscored the importance of disaster preparedness and providing support for workers affected by natural calamities, particularly in agriculture. A 10 million peso bounty is up for those who could give information that will lead to the arrest of fugitive pastor Apollo Kiboloy. The religious leader of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ is wanted for sexual abuse and human trafficking. His co-accused, Crescente Pauline and Ingrid Canada, Sylvia Semanes and Jacqueline Roy also have a bounty for their arrest worth 1 million pesos each. Interior Secretary Benjamin Abalos Jr. says that private anonymous donors pulled the bounty due to their frustration over the case. He also says Kibulo is still in the country based on intelligence reports. He urged the religious leader to surrender and face his charges before the courts. Philippine National Police Chief General Romel Marbil, meanwhile, said they are studying whether to file charges against former President Rodrigo Duterte, who claims to know Kibuloy's whereabouts. Marbil said those cuddling Kibuloy may face charges of obstruction of justice. Duterte, who manages the properties belonging to KOJC, said that he knows where Kibuloy is but would not reveal it. Kibuloy's lawyer, Ferdinand Topacio, meanwhile, said the pastor cannot be blamed for hiding from the courts as he believes he is being harassed and persecuted by the government. In other news, the Philippines and South Korea have signed a Memorandum of Understanding that would increase the allowed seats for flights between Manila and Incheon. Under the new agreement signed on July 4, the weekly seat entitlements on flights between Manila and Incheon airports have increased from 20,000 seats to 30,000. This aims to cater to the increase of Filipino and South Korean tourists since the COVID-19 pandemic. The Transportation Department says the new deal further liberalizes the third and fourth freedom of the air without limiting flights from Manila to other parts of South Korea. It adds increase in capacity will be felt once airlines take the opportunity to carry more passengers between the capital cities of the two countries. The third and fourth freedoms of the air are aviation rights, allowing the transport of passengers and cargo from one country to another and vice versa. Data from the Department of Tourism show that over 682,000 Korean tourists have entered the Philippines as of May 2024. And that's the latest and the biggest stories on the PNA headlines. For more news updates, uh, visit our website, pna.gov.ph, or our Facebook and Dex account, Philippine News Agency. The PNA headlines is also streamed via the Servicio Facebook page. You may also watch the PNA headlines through the Philippine News Agency's YouTube account and via the News and Information Bureau website, nid.gov.ph, under PNA News. I am Marita Mwahe and this is the PNA Headlines, bringing stories that unite the nation.